Hello, my name is Jose Cura and I am setting and directing this Tosca and as a matter of fact I'm also singing the role of Cavaradossi which means of course a big 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 effort during the whole preparation process. I have on my on my side the fact that I've done this role nearly 300 times for the last 28 or 30 years which means I kind of know how to handle it but still uh, when you are tired you're tired. And so the, the, the secret to direct and to sing is to have a very good crew. And here I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled because my, my personal crew is amazing. The group of singers I'm collaborating with is amazing too. And little by little we are getting into the system of work of the manual, which is not your everyday system of work because it's a different kind of house, it's a small house. Uh, you have maybe one person to do several things, you need to understand how they work and at the beginning it takes more energy. But finally, I think today after one week we are starting to be very well oiled and results are slowly appearing, which is, which is very promising. Uh, people keep on asking me what are they going to take from this Tosca and, uh, and I say, well, I don't know, I'm not gonna, we're not going to create a production where we're going to reveal some obscure, never seen before kind of concept. Uh, this is not the purpose of this show right now. The purpose of this show is, first of all, reopening the, the doors of the house to a full production of an opera after the pandemic, which already, just that, it's already a big mission. Uh, the second purpose, of course, is to be able to set a huge opera on a small stage and within the constraints of a small pit, which complicates further things. So here is the, probably the only the, the surprise that the public will get, not the only, I will not say the only, we'll get another couple of surprises regarding the great singers we have, the great conducting we have, the beautiful orchestra everybody knows, mainly the choir, which I'm very pleased with, uh, Cor Malta is doing a great job. But on top of that, the aesthetic surprise would be to see uh, that there's no orchestra in front of the set, but the orchestra is behind the set, but it's not seen. It's not like a semi-stage concert where you can see the orchestra. The orchestra is behind a, a, a backdrop, a backdrop that imitates the bricks of Malta, so it will create some atmosphere. And in front of that, using also the pit, but leveled to the level of the stage, the whole action will take place. And I think that's, uh, that's for maybe a premiere in, 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 in Malta to use the stage in such a way. If it works, it could set a good tool to do other big operas in the future, something that was missing in the manual for the reasons that everybody knows, the size of the house mainly, it's a baroque house, and, and, and that's it. So we are very, very hopeful it's going to work and that will open a great future for other titles. Malta is, 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 is it's, it's, it's a completely different thing altogether. I mean, to be in Malta is, is to be in a place that is still in the middle of the fight between being in the 21st century and the amazing energy and strong presence of the buildings of ages ago. And uh, to begin with, with Gigantia, which is probably one of the oldest buildings in the whole planet. So we are talking about a place that, that starts, what, 10,000 years ago and is still here and, and doing opera in a modern environment. I mean, the, the, the art of, of, of things that this include, include a lot of intellectual changes, intellectual developments, uh, philosophical wars, museums, stones. I mean, it's amazing to be in this city. Every time you turn a corner, you go, oh, that's new. Um, it's, it's a perpetual, it's like an open-air museum. Excitement is part of our job. We, we artists are a special fauna. A fauna that, that enjoys going on stage to, to be watched. I mean, that's, that's borderline with hedonism and vanity. If you handle it properly, it's a good thing. If you're an idiot, then it can turn against you. But at the end is what it is. I mean, we enjoy going on stage most of the time under the skin of somebody else, because I'm under the skin of a character, it's not me who is saying certain things on stage. People used to ask me, why are you so violent when you're on stage? I am not like that in my private life, but Kanyo in Pagliacci is a violent guy and they pay me to be violent, okay? But people tend to associate the character with the, with the artists. I used to say it's like if you pretend that Anthony Hopkins eats brains at his house because Hannibal Lecter did it, you know, I mean, no. So it's, it's a compliment in a way, because it means that people identifies you strongly with the character, that means you're doing a good job. 
But uh, yes, it's, it's exciting to do that. It's a privileged way of earning your living, even if, if stress and pressure sometimes are at rendezvous more than you want. Uh, but even though it's, it's, a great, it's a great way of earning your living, doing such a beautiful job.